Okay, so I'm on the way down to Derwentwater this morning. It's uh, the height of autumn now in the Lake District here, and uh, everywhere's looking lovely at the minute. So I came out just before sunrise with the hope that things would brighten up a little bit and it doesn't look like they are going to so I came up from Ambleside and every lay-by and car park was full and every focal point along the way was a line of photographers stood behind tripods so it's silly season I guess which uh, who can blame people for wanting to photograph this beautiful place so we're just uh, I'm hoping to get some inspiration when I get down to the water's edge here so let's see how we get on so I'm gonna head down to the tree on the on the edge there and it looks a little bit bright around there and see if I can get a view down the down the lake and into Bardale and see how the colors are looking down there so there's glorious colours uh, everywhere you look at the minute it's uh, it's really peak autumn I would say now middle of October which is great because uh, I'm hoping to be here for two weeks now so hopefully I'll uh, I'll have the energy to get out and uh, see what I can see this, uh, there is some fantastic colour along here but I'm hoping to get to uh, the tree on the corner there, have a look down Derwent Water into Borrowdale and it looks a bit bright around there as well so hopefully the scene will open up before us and I'll be able to see something inspiring down there what's uh, going to get me to get my camera out. So I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you in a minute when I get there. So I've just made it round this side of the lake, what I was referring to earlier. And the, the forest path leads through there, but I'm gonna just come to, I'm just gonna come to the water's edge here and see if we can see the scene opening out in front of us, which hopefully we will be able to, and gives you an idea of what you're faced with down there. There we go, fantastic. There's something really nice about standing on the side of a lake, just looking into the distance. So down there, that's typically known as the Jaws of Borrowdale, where the two uh, the two sets of peaks come together with Castle Crag, the smaller one in the middle, which is a very uh, popular walk here in the Lake District. And there looks to be plenty of colour going on down there. So uh, that's, I'm sure that's going to feature in further explorations this next week or two. And then up here, we've got up further up to Keswick there, and we've got Skidar above. Fantastic. Causey Pike over there and to the west. But I'm going to have a wander down here and uh, see how things look. It's, uh, it's just a chance out in this morning to get reacquainted with the area I suppose, see how autumn's taking hold and where I might like to uh, spend some time over the next week or so. I'm sure it'll be around here. It smells amazing around here with these Scots pines as well. Okay so we'll continue down this woodland path and uh, it'll open up to a bay in a minute and we'll have another vantage point over the lake so we'll see how we're looking from there. I'll catch up with you in a minute. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm approaching the uh, the lake again here now. Just come over this little bridge. And uh, like I said earlier, the view opens up a little bit here. So should hopefully get to see down the side of the lake here with down to the jetty there and we'll get some colour in the foreground hopefully and uh, this might make for a bit of interest in the photograph and just constantly looking around to see if anything stands out So this is my, this is probably my first morning shoot of the year and we're in the middle of October. So I'm doing well for my early morning shoots. I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and, well I'm not going to try, I am going to do. I'm going to get down here, there looks to be some fallen trees or fallen branches. I'm going to try and pick out, no I see, I was going to try and pick out that shoreline as a bit of foreground interest but it looks to curve away so I'm probably going to need to approach it from this angle yeah and then because there's some glorious some glorious colour down there there's a Oh look, and there's a convenient rock or two place there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up here. I'm going to frame something up and I'm going to see how it looks. But I think that's going to be a shot for me. So I've got set up here. I've obviously got the foreground interest in the boulder. The... Uh, the shoreline sweeps around there to the left and we've got our nice line of trees leading us in to the um, the fells in the distance there Kingshow and Castle Crag so I'm just gonna use my camera as a bit of a mobile viewfinder to try and see if anything stands out I'm going to just see if I can make an image there, see how I feel when I see it on the back of the, the viewfinder. I'm going to put my filters on, certainly my polarizer to try and help with the reflections in the water and maybe to help these colours pop a little bit more. And then I'll probably put one of my neutral density filters on as well to help bring the uh, shutter speed up so that I can So that I can freeze the water movement just a touch. So where are we? Here we go. So this is a 0.9. The Pro Glass Neutral Density Filter, which I'll put in there. So that's going to give us. That's going to give me a 20 second exposure now. Before I commit to doing that, is that, is that worth it? Um, I don't know if I'm at the right angle there, or if I'm wide enough. Just looking through the viewfinder here to see if I can get a better composition. Yeah, it's maybe okay from from there. 
I think there's probably two possibilities here, so I'm going to go for both. So that's 16 seconds. And uh, we'll wait for that. Let's see how that comes out. The ducks look to be having fun over there. And then when this has come off, we'll have a look around. I'll just move slightly. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. What I'm going to do, there's no reason not to do this, so I'm going to put a 0.6 neutral density filter, graduated filter on there. got to angle it a little bit to not chop too not darken the trees too much and then I'm just going to move over here slightly and I think I'll step back a little bit as well there we go I want to try and get the the arch of that bay into into the shot as well and that dead tree on the left which is looking quite nice right I don't think this lens is going to be wide enough for that but I'm going to level it off and I'll commit to taking that shot and then what I'll do is I will loosen the head of the tripod I'll, t I'll rotate it a little bit and I can then focus down the lake there to get the rest of the scene in and I'll stitch those together and hopefully that'll work out yeah that looks okay and there we go and that'll just allow me a little bit of extra room around the frame to uh, to create the image there It's a bit flat this morning, likewise, but you work with what you're given, I suppose. And I don't think it hurts to to just try anyway. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to fire one off that way so I can... I've got space left and right. My main area of focus is a, a rectangle, if you will, including the boulder and the arc of the shoreline, but I want to follow the shoreline right the way around to Castle Crag there. And I mean, I, I could swap to my wider lens, but when you can just rotate it like that and with the longer exposure, I should be able to stitch that without any problems. Okay, so just, uh, just having a quick look around, it doesn't look as if things are gonna change in terms of lighting it will obviously get brighter as the sun lights up but it will be nice to get a bit more of a, a dramatic effect on the light but i don't think that's going to happen this morning or i'm too late for it but you have days like that i suppose where you'd have been better off having a lion but you can't beat being out Right, I'm just, I'm not sure if I need that natural, neutral density. See, what, one of the really good things about this camera is you do get such a wide dynamic range and it's so forgiving that you could practically shoot that scene in complete darkness and you'll be able to bring up all the details and it won't degrade in post-production. It's quite fantastic, really. Um, yeah I like how the rocks come out into the scene there and with the long exposure time you get a you know freezing this water which is not the most pleasant when it's choppy like that well it's not mega choppy but you know it's not mirror smooth okay so what, I'll, what I think I might do is I might just have a wander 
down towards that fallen tree and that dead tree and see if see if I can put that in the foreground down the shore I think I think the best image from there is is back there because you get more of the shoreline but there might be something here with using this tree here see how it looks through the viewfinder I need to be further back a little bit again one of the things of using a prime lens you have to move your feet rather than adjust the lens so I'm going to pick my focus point there just on the tree I'm going to adjust my exposure a tiny bit to brighten it up see if I can make sure I've got the tree stump or the the whole of the dead tree as it meets the ground in and we'll see what that looks like big lorries and vans going past there you won't see that in the photograph hopefully but here we go Yeah, yeah, not sure about that. What I might try and do is, I'm going to just take that off there again. Because I like being free of the tripod. And I'll just see if I can use it as a, almost like a mobile viewfinder really, just to see how it looks now. There might be something there, but yeah, I'm going to take that. There's, there's no reason not to. Here we go. Right, let me have a look. So, what do I want? Do I want all of that tree in? Yeah, and I want all of. I want all of that tree in as well. So I'm on gravel here, so I need to make sure I'm nice and as sturdy as I can be. Make sure I'm level. 16 seconds. 20 seconds it is. F25. Let's have a look at that. I'm not sure if the tripod moved then, so I'm going to have to investigate that when it cooks out. There, good, well, you never know, do you, when you're laid in bed and it's dark and you want to keep snoozing, you've got to come out to, to see, haven't you? Okay, so, it looks pretty sharp from what I can see on the back of the screen. I mean... Who knows? Who knows what will what will feel about that? Okay. Right. I think I'm going to leave it there. Maybe. I'm not sure what else I'm going to be able to achieve from here, other than having a look and. Keeping my hand in with uh, my creative vision, if you will. I do love that scene down there where you've got all those trees from that bank leading us in. I'm going to take a panoramic shot there. Or an image which I will then later crop into panoramic. So I want to get in the shore in that little alcove over there and I would like to see the colour seems to end just after Castle Crag in the centre there so I don't need too much of what's going on after that so I might focus 
more on this side of the image there we go let's just have a look what that looks like 13 seconds I can always take another one recompose down there but there we go yeah okay so what I'll I, th I think from from looking through the viewfinder and look and looking around that dead tree has got to feature in that image because it adds something it stands out against everything else is green and that's it's yellow color so the only way i'm going to get that is to move back again and i might already have this on a previous shot but with now my intention to specifically capture that i think i need to make sure i do right so i'm going to make sure the head of the tripod is level I'm going to put my self timer on for two seconds so everything can settle after I've pressed the shutter because this I'm on leaves leaves here so there's probably going to be some form of movement again 16 seconds and then I'll turn to the right there and we'll have a look how that looks up Okay, there we go. Hopefully that'll be legible on the final image, but I'll just rotate that around as well. And I'll take another. And we'll see how that looks. Normally when the sun rises here, you get a big patch of light on these fells opposite. And I've got an, an, an image in my book, Capture Local and Volume 2, showing that. I'll uh, put that on screen now for you to have a quick look at. Okay, so there's my second image from the the panorama intention and I can stitch that together and show you what that looks like now. Good, okay, so what I'm going to do for my final image from here, I'm just going to take myself to these rocks in the very foreground and I'm just thinking of portrait orientation shot looking down towards Castle Crag there so I'll set that up there and I'll just use this to try and yeah so I probably want to be back there a bit it's such a handy such a handy tool the viewfinder when uh, or the LCD screen when you're not used to one on my other camera but now do you want the do you want the branch in there at the top of the scene or do you want it clean like that let's go for a clean one first and see how that looks I'll make sure I'm level there with my horizon I'm going to double tap on this boulder and I'm going to manually focus into that which is there and I'm at f25 so my hyperfocal distance is about three meters which is that's three meters at least so I'll be all right for sharpness front to back for that one which is what you want with a landscape photo in my view And we'll see how this comes out. I do like portrait orientation. I think it's my preferred format over the typical landscape. But there you go. Have a look at that. See what you think. Maybe I've cropped that rock off on the bottom left corner a bit too much there. I should have probably composed it out. But I think I'll move back a little bit more actually. Just to 
make sure I get that in and in this shot I'll try and get in the branch above but I don't think it's going to work that because in order to, in order I don't like chopping things off at the end you know in the frame so you can see here that this you're just getting a bit of the branch and you're not getting all of it in and in order to get all of it in you're gonna have to be right up here. it's gonna look messy that so I'm gonna leave that one that's my thinking behind it anyway whether I'm right or wrong is totally irrelevant but what I will do is I'll take this again let's check my focus there now will I take that because there's not a lot going on in this bottom corner square crop maybe hmm. I know one of the things I'm trying to do to develop my you know I've been taking landscape photographs for over 20 years and you know some I need I, I still view it as a learning journey you know I don't I don't ever think you're going you're going to get to a position where you know what's the phrase I'm looking for you're, you're expert at it or every shot you take is brilliant because it's impossible to do that I think you need to just constantly question what you're doing exercise your vision like I always say and and review everything you you're committing yourself to you know this is sounds stupid but that's what 15 seconds of your life stood waiting for this and if you add that up over a year you stood around for a month doing nothing so you need to make sure they're going to work okay so I've got that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt myself up there and I'm going to take that again and then I'll be able to join them together and we'll be able to see if it works I suspect it'll be too wide I used to be a huge fan of wide angle but in the last year or two I've changed my view on that I tell you what I'm going to go again and try and get the rest of that tree in that's ridiculously wide I don't think that'll stitch very well neither maybe but we can try can't we so constant experiments little thoughts while we're out here and uh, who knows you just might come across something what works obviously the the rules to follow aesthetical rules or whatever you want to call them but sometimes for me you just can't beat experimentation maybe that's the the scientist in me or the engineer but who knows right I'm gonna put poke you up there and I'm just gonna go for a wander down here to see if anything else is possible it's um, it's always worth having a look comments on my latest YouTube video there thank you very much I'll respond to them when I get back I also love using my phone to take images it's a great little viewfinder and I think it helps with it helps with seeing things see that's quite nice with the the rocks in the foreground and the branch overhanging if you can get the branch to clear the fell tops there that's quite nice so I'll put a do a little video here so you can see yeah so it's uh, if the sky was a bit more interesting then it might be worth it might be worth a look but I think given how it is I'm not going to bother see look at that 
that's an iPhone picture there with those leaves on the rock there you can guarantee somebody would think I'd placed them there intentionally that's not my thing though there we go nice little arrangement I love how these oak trees just cling to these rocks and grow out of seemingly grow out of nowhere okay good right at ten past nine and I'm done already I think I'll leave it there for now so again thanks for watching thanks for uh, your support with uh, my videos and your comments and your likes and your retweets and whatever else goes on I'll run through um, I'll run through a few images in the uh, slideshow at the end of this video just like I always do to uh, see if we can get some opinion on the, the images and the favourites and we'll see what we think from there so again thank you for watching thanks for your support and uh, I'll hopefully catch you again on the next video it's uh, it's lovely here at the moment with the autumn we just need a bit of light to bring it to life and uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks I'll have some images to share with you there okay all the best for now see you soon